another day, another lead code problem. This will be jump game. I think it's a first of series of a few problems. Some of them are dynamic programming, but this should be a bit easier. But before I jump into it, let me quickly say this video is sponsored. Hooray! My audience gets an ex exclusive giveaway of free access to programming courses on educative.io, like for example, Groking the Coding Interview. More info at the end of this video. But here first, jump game, start. Given an array of non-negative integers, your initially positions at, positioned and the first index of the array. Given this array, we start here. Each element in the array represents your maximum jump length at that position, determined if you are able to reach the last index. This means if you are here, you can jump by at most two. And it turns out that even if you are allowed to jump to the left, if you start from the very beginning, it only makes sense to jump to the right. Let's just assume we go to the right. From here, we can jump to one of those two positions. We can get stuck because we might be at zero. Not always we should jump forward. Determined if you're able to reach the last index. I will solve even harder version of this problem. I will minimize the number of jumps. Not just say true or false. I will say true or false and additionally say what's the number of jumps. For convenience, n will be size of the array. I can make this slightly bigger. Uh, I, I am at position zero. I don't know, position zero. I'm not sure if that's necessary. Let's see. I iterate through the array. No, okay. Uh, my position is zero. While true, I will later fill some condition here. Uh, initially, my position tells me I can jump by at most this, at most three. So instead of my position, let's say that it's called can reach because after first jump, I can be anywhere up to here. I will iterate through over those positions and check how far to the right I can jump from, from them. It doesn't make sense to like jump here only to jump there after a moment if I can jump anywhere here immediately. Uh, so like from free, I can jump anywhere here. So just let's jump to the, uh, the one of those positions and from that the jump to somewhere to the right of this interval while true so can reach can reach actually i went with a bit stupid version i don't know how to implement this this is very easy but i don't know how to implement it i just want to say then it's this interval then this interval let's say that there is interval where i can be okay, initially it's from zero to zero i uh, either want to know how far I can reach, let's say initially equal to minus one, iterate over things from interval first to interval dot second, can reach is maximized with i plus nums of i, because from i I can jump by at most this, and after this is done, interval becomes, let's, if a moment ago interval was from five to eight, and now I see that can reach is 15, I can jump up to this position, it means I can be from 9 to 15. So this is interval dot second plus one. This is this value plus one, comma can reach. But first, if can reach is greater or equal n minus one, I can already jump here. Let's say return true, but additionally, I can say int jumps is zero. Well, in the very first place, if n greater, smaller, equal one, then return two, and that would be zero jumps. What else? What else? If this is return true, but additionally, I could say here jumps plus plus, and here I claim that jumps is the number of jumps I made, if I minimize the number of jumps. And additionally, if can reach is not greater than interval second, or maybe just this. I create this interval. If now interval first is greater than interval dot second, return false. This means that, for example, I had interval from five to eight, and now can reach is like seven or eight. 
I cannot jump further. I didn't expand my possibilities. Then they returned false. And uh, here, assert false. I can never get there. My while true is infinite, eventually it will end with true or false. Run code. But I could return jumps over here, and it would be invalid solution. Your answer false, expected answer true. One second. Uh, interval first second. Maximize this. Interval second plus one can reach. Seems correct to me. Quick fix. I mean, I hope it will be a quick fix. After a moment, it is minus one. Something is wrong. Oh, my for loop is broken. I wanted to say from first to second, and I wrote something stupid instead. I just missed that. True, true. But let's say I want to print the number of jumps. This is minimum possible number of jumps. Uh, here it would be zero. It isn't necessary at all, and LeetCode doesn't really check what I print. I just claim, yeah, that this is the solution. Uh, like here, from this, it's good to jump here. Notice that I can jump to anywhere in this interval, accepted by the way. I can jump to anything in this interval, but from this I choose a position that will that will put me furthest to the right. Uh, yeah. On lead code you have a lot of problems like that. Jump game, jump game 2, 3, 4 I think. Uh, but this is the version with true or false are, is the most basic. Uh, but yeah, it's important to kind of maintain this can how far we can reach. Some solution without counting jumps would be to just maintain I think can reach initially equal to zero and do something like this. Can reach is maximized, can reach comma nums i plus nums of i. And uh, but also if i is n minus one return true. If I get out of this loop, return false. This very short code should be a solution for the problem as well. This time without counting jumps. I just say, here I have three, then I can reach anything up to this position. Then I go through those positions, continue going, and every time I update how far I can reach. Again, accept it. Oh, I didn't want to click that. As I said in the past, don't worry about those statistics. They are stupid. You shouldn't care that much about your running time. And both those solutions are linear in time and constant in additional complexity, in additional space. Well, here it's obvious that it's linear because we just iterate for array at most once. Here, those intervals, like you might have interval from five to eight, after you are done with it, you will have some next interval from nine to let's say 15 and so on and so on. Nothing will be repeated. So also every number will be visited just once. As I already said at the beginning of this video, uh, maybe now that's better, Educative.io is a platform with programming courses like Groking the Coding Interview that focuses on patterns in coding questions. Like, oh, this is a pattern of sliding window. Use this in su such cases. Uh, we can open here, I don't know, small subarray, blah, blah, blah. So something will happen there with examples and explanation. Very nice. And they wrote to me about a giveaway just for my audience you can visit link in the description and do stuff like visit their page on facebook and for that there is a giveaway of free subscriptions to their to all their courses it's a uh, for free month yeah 10 winners will receive free month access to all of educatives educatives courses even if you don't win i recommend the platform educative.io so go check it out and there's also for everybody free course behavioral interviews yeah it's groking the behavioral <laughs> behavioral interview go check it out i hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new thanks again to educative.io for sponsoring this video go, go check out the giveaway and their courses and see you all tomorrow to another day of lead code i think it will be day 25 or something like that so we are getting close to the end of the month see ya bye